In this lesson, we are going to learn about one more principle called DRY principle. DRY stands for don't repeat yourself. This is a very simple principle, very easy to understand, but very complex or very difficult to follow. Okay. And in this, ex in this class, I'm going to explain you why DRY principle is important and uh, what do we actually mean by DRY principle using a very very simple example okay before we go into details let's see what we have done so far actually we have created a class called my date it has three member fields then we have created one method called easily pair then we have setters and getters then we created couple of objects then we have assigned some values then we have printed the object state or the values the field values inside the object using system.out.println and after that we have seen that the fields the member fields they should not be accessible outside this class as per encapsulation principle the fields in the class should be accessible should be modified or should be visible only to the member methods that is nothing but all these methods they should not be visible or they should not be accessible from outside the class why it is important it is important because if they are accessible if they are if they can be modified from outside the class it is only a matter of time before someone corrupts the data okay so to avoid that we have make sure outside this class anyone can set the value only through the member methods and inside these methods we are going to validate the input before really assigning to these fields so in this way we can make sure that the values contained in these fields are always valid so we are going to save the integrity of the data from corrupting from getting it corrupted from the outside world okay so all those things we have seen we have seen getters and setters we have seen the member methods uh, we have seen how to print the values and all those things now now it is the time to go to dry principle okay as i said the dry stands for don't repeat yourself so are we repeating anything in this class or anything in this code? Let's have a look. If we see our class, we have three fields. We have getters and setters, they are all different. And we have one method that is easily pair. Uh, and no logic or no code is repeated here. Now if we see this method, I mean the code inside the main method, we are creating an object, perfectly okay. We are assigning the values perfectly okay then just to see the values we are printing it and that too perfectly okay let me remove this invocation we don't need it here okay we created a different object because we created a different object we have to assign the values we did that again to see the values we have printed it so far so good we created one more object but in this case we have assigned value to only one field again we want to see the values so we have printed them to make things simple, let me remove this method invocation. Okay, so it seems we did not repeat anything, right? We have objects, we have values assigned and we are reading the objects. But if you see closely, we are repeating some pattern here. So if you see, we are printing the object values and same code is at three places. And the only thing that is changing is the object on which we are invoking these methods. So we repeated something, something called, okay, these methods, the pattern or the code that is printing the value of methods. We agree that we are printing the values on different objects, but nonetheless, we are calling the same methods, the code is same. And if you remember, I actually copy pasted it two times and after that I just modified the object name here so in software development remember this one and never forget okay in software development copy paste is the simplest thing to do but it is the costliest thing to do I repeat one one more time because it is very important in software development the copy paste is the simplest thing to do but it is the costliest thing to do and it is going to create nightmares nightmares in maintenance okay what do we mean by that i mean can we can we can, can we uh, we need to understand it a bit better way so to 
explain that what the statement that, that I have just made I'm going to create one more field called error and I am giving a default value here that is AD which stands for after the death of the Christ and I am going to create getters and setters for this particular field. Now I want to print this particular field on all these three objects. Now I added only one field but to print that field on every object I have to make the code change at three places. So here I have to write okay one place two times three times so let me run this once it may take Okay, so far so good. It's okay. The formatting is okay. Okay, now I want to fix this formatting. I said okay, but let's say I want to fix this form formatting. So I need to change it at three places. So you, you can see the pain that it is causing, right? So I got it wrong at one place. So it, I got it wrong at different place also. Okay, now I did it at the wrong place so I have to move it to the right place okay here also okay now it looks a bit better so because I copy pasted whenever I need to make change at one place I needed to make the change at other places also so here it is a very simple program it hardly has 70 lines and a simple change has triggered change at three places and if we see the real-time programs production programs they are going to have thousands millions millions of rows and if it if this kind of programming goes on then a small change is going to impact a lot of code at different places so we so repeating or the copy paste or repeating anything is going to be very costly because if you have to apply a fix you have to apply that fix at multiple places so how can we avoid repeating this particular pattern of printing the object now let me create one more method the method name is print my date object it is not going to return anything so return type is void and it is going to take one input argument nothing but my date object okay so inside this method I can print the object Okay, I have created a function or created a method that can take object of type my date and it can print the values. So let me change it at one place. Here I am going to call that method. I need to make it static. Uh, bear with me and I will explain you why it should be static a bit later. Okay, let's run it once. Okay, now it printed properly. Okay, let me also remove that hello world. We don't need it anymore. Okay, instead of printing this, let me call that function every time. ID is so intelligent, right? <laughs> okay, so now I'm calling a method instead of writing that particular incantation so here inside this method the code is at only one time it's not repeated so let me write let uh, sorry let me run okay 
so we can see it is working fine so now let me add one more field and let's see how complex that change is going to be now so i'm going to add one more field this time i'm going to add week of the day of the week and i'm going to hard code it to monday so it's okay and let me print this particular field on all those objects so all that i need to do okay let me create getters and setters and all that i need to do is come here so i'm running it see how simple it became previously i needed to make the change at three places but now i am able to make the change at one place even i make some error i just need to fix it at one place so repeating the repeating the code or copy pasting the code is going to be very costly so at all costs you have to avoid it and the simple methods will encourage you to reuse the code so here i have a code and it is very much reusable so not only in this method or not only in this file i can call this method from anywhere and pass a object of type my date and it can print it so please remember dry principle is very important it is very simple which says don't repeat yourself and to um, if you re if you repeat yourself or if you do the copy paste what is going to happen is any small change is going to be made it i mean if it if there is any small change we have to make that small change at multiple times so in a very big program it is going to be very difficult to manage that kind of complexity so never repeat yourself never do copy paste okay now why are we calling a method right i mean to print a object of particular type we created a function and it re it avoided the code repetition but now in a bigger program in a bigger program or in a real time production code there are going to be lots and lots of classes because now we are learning classes we created only one class but in real time there are going to be thousands of classes if not thousands hundreds of classes i believe there will be those uh, there will be thousands of classes okay so for every class we can't create a method like this am i right it is going to be very difficult Uh, so why can't this object or this class print its own object so whatever objects are there of type my date why can't the class take care of printing it okay let's try that we already did try that and we failed at that situation time so let's try once more i am just printing the object and i am asking okay class here the class name is my date my date class i am trying to print a object of you so why can't you help me to print the object let's run it once and it is not helping us and it's only printing class name so which is useless that's the reason we went to uh, we have printed all those values then to avoid the repetition we created a method okay so here when we are trying to print this object actually we want to print it as a string so this system dot out dot println is trying to print this particular object as a string so it is converting it to string so actually even though we can't see it here it is calling a method called to string okay i don't see a method called to string in this class so even though you can't see it it is there actually in java there is a concept i mean java, java basically depends on the concept of inheritance so every object has some methods those methods we are going to cover later but for now understand that every class has a inherited method called to string and this to string method is the one which is printing the class name at some hash code okay now we want to change the behavior of this particular method called to string okay let's go to our class and let's define that method so what is the method name to string and it's not going to take any input values 
and it's going to return a string okay let's make it public okay we have defined a method called to string and here we are passing all those I mean we are concatenating all the values and we are printing them so let me make it a bit nice Okay, if we now see, if we run the program, here we can see that the println is able to print the object the way we want it. So we don't need to call this function anymore. I just created this function to illustrate the fact you can create some simple methods that will help you to avoid the repetition of the code and uh, they will encourage you to reuse the code. Okay, we don't need it anymore we are going to directly print the object okay let me run this program once so we got the output as we intended okay here in this lesson we covered a important principle called dry principle and we have shown you how to use that we want to rip we want to avoid the repetition of code and we want to avoid the copy paste because they are going to be very costly and any small change can result in very big change at multiple places so we want to avoid it and we will avoid it and after that we have seen creating small methods will help you a lot in the long run to avoid all those repetitions after that we have seen a method called toString which can be invoked on any object and we have shown you how to call the toString method how to create it in the class itself so that it can be called so we are able to print the object okay we don't need to call it toString explicitly if you see here we are not calling it explicitly here we called it explicitly that's okay anyhow uh, the while the printing it is going to call the toString anyhow okay so the, that is all about to string okay as i have shown you in the last class setters on setters and getters are so common similarly to string is also so common so the ide is going to give us a way to generate it automatically so i'm going to press alt enter sorry alt insert then it, sh it is going to show me a method called to string and i'm going to select all the fields and it created a method for me so this override you can ignore or you can delete for now and let me print it uh, sorry let me run the program so this is the way yeah now it is even better right i mean we are printing three objects of type my date it has these fields year 2017 month 15 day 36 era ad and all those things okay so it's even better the uh, the method that IDA generated looks even better than what we did previously. Okay, that is all from this class and the takeaway from this class is don't repeat yourself and the two string method which is always available on the class. Okay, last but not the least, please do subscribe so that you will get the alerts whenever I upload a video or whenever I try to teach a new concept. Also, if you are benefited from this lesson, Please share it with your friends on Facebook or on Google. Please share with them so that they can also learn and they will appreciate you in turn for helping them to learn. That is all from my side. Once again, welcome to Manohar Academy. See you in the next lesson. Thank you.